you don't mind, just for the introductions. Um, familiar with most of you, I think, but my name's John Patterson Williams, and I am the coordinator of the PHJV Policy Committee. So I'm the one that sends you those, hopefully not too annoying, of emails and reminders uh, every month. Uh, we're really glad to welcome Kurt Mazur this morning for the the final installment of sort of our grassland theme in the webinars. And so we've moved from west to east and we're concluding uh, here now in, in Manitoba, the Canadian west to east. Um, so Kurt is the Director of Conservation for the Manitoba Habitat Heritage Corporation, and we're really glad to have him here today. And I'll let him give more information on his uh, illustrious career. So thank you. Well, thanks for that introduction, John. Um, I think I'll uh, like to start by uh, acknowledging that uh, I'm located uh, near Erickson, Manitoba, which is in Treaty 2 territory. And, and much of the, uh, the grassland conservation work I'm going to provide an overview of is, is also located in Treaty 2 and Treaty 1 territory, both of which are the traditional lands of the uh, Anishinaabek, Cree, uh, OG Cree, Dene, and Dakota peoples and the homeland of the Métis Nation. Um, so yes, as John said, I'm I'm uh, I'm the director of conservation with the Manitoba Habitat Heritage Corporation, and uh, I started this position uh, just three months ago. Um, prior to that, I had uh, worked in the environmental consulting field, um, mostly in the aquatics area, um, with a focus on um, uh, impacts and mitigation to maple leaf. In, in prairie rivers in Manitoba. Uh, prior to that, I, I spent a number of years studying uh, forest owls in Saskatchewan and then grassland and forest birds in Manitoba with MHHC as well as the uh, the wildlife branch. So Paul, I'll turn my camera off now and jump into this presentation um, if that's okay. So today, um, what I'm going to be providing is a, an overview of ongoing initiatives uh, in grassland conservation in Manitoba. And currently, um, there, there is no coordinated province-wide grassland conservation program in Manitoba. Um, and the last such program was the uh, the Manitoba Prairie Conservation Action Plan, um, a document that spanned a, a five year time frame ending in 2001. Um, uh, more recently, um, MHHC hosted a, a grassland forum uh, in the winter and into the spring of uh, 21, 2021. And the forum brought together um, both non-government organizations and government agencies working on grassland conservation as a, as a forum to share work um, and exchange ideas. Um, a, uh, a new initiative, a new development um, in Manitoba is the Manitoba Mixed Grass Prairie uh, Priority Place Planning Initiative. Now this is uh, co-led by Environment and Climate Change Canada. Um, and uh, the Nature Conservancy of Canada, uh, with the goal to develop uh, a grassland conservation plan um, that incorporates socioeconomic uh, and cultural perspectives uh, into a shared vision for the landscape uh, with the spirit of collaboration and reconciliation. But uh, back to this um, um, presentation today, uh, I'm essentially going to provide an overview of information that was presented at the uh, at the 2021 Grasslands Forum, providing some highlights um, in uh, specific areas of conservation in Manitoba. So I've organized the uh, the areas of of grassland conservation into four broad areas. Um, uh, for big groupings, um, preservation, which was largely going to be discussed as securement, um, and then management with a number of uh, areas under management, including stewardship, uh, range management planning, um, management of donated or purchased lands, um, regenerative agriculture, um, some discussion of community pastures and, and grassland management, uh, and wildlife management areas. 
as well as uh, I'll talk, touch on a, a little bit of monitoring that's going on or research and monitoring and end with some uh, discussion of some grassland mitigation that has been started this last year. To you know, provide a, a list of some of the agencies or the majority of the the groups that are involved, and I apologize if I've if I left somebody off here. Um, the Manitoba Habitat Heritage Corporation, Nature Conservancy of Canada, Nux Unlimited, Canada, um, the Manitoba Wildlife and Fisheries Branch. Though I think uh, they may have changed their name recently. Um, uh, the Conservation Data Center, the Critical Wildlife Habitat Program, uh, Birds Canada, and Environment and Climate Change Canada, Manitoba Beef Producers, uh, the Association of Manitoba Community Pastures, the Manitoba Forage and Grassland Association, and Manitoba Association of Watershed Districts. So we'll starting to uh, um, preservation and and largely what I what I'm referring to here is uh, conservation agreements and and the four. Four groups listed there are some of the main, ag main agencies uh, delivering conservation agreements and grasslands, um, MHHC, NCC, Ducks Unlimited Canada, and the Critical Wildlife Habitat Program. Uh, so conservation agreements in Manitoba are subject to um, the Conservation Agreements Act, um, where um, conservation agreements, uh, landowners are provided with a, a payment um, Based on the uh, the assessed or the appraised value, um, and and with some reflection on habitat type and quality um, for securement of uh, of the of the land of the habitat. Now, these CAs are are largely focused in the for grasslands are focused in the southeast of Manitoba with the tall grass prairie, um, and as well as the southwestern. Um, portions with mixed grass prairie, uh, with some work also in the uh, interlake and the west lake regions um, being targeted. Uh, now the CAs are designed to protect habitat while permitting uh, some uses of the land. Um, and if there are areas that are of, of uh, cultivated acres or other productive lands outside the CA, uh, that may be on the title as well. Um, <clears throat> And the CA is filed on the as a caveat on on the land title and stays with that title uh, in perpetuity. Typically, the, the CAs are signed with a, a series of restrictions. Um, uh, and in the case of of grasslands, it would be it'd be you know no cultivation, no breaking, no draining, no clearing, uh, and no development. And a key partner in delivering um, conservation agreements in in uh, grasslands is uh, Environment and Climate Change Canada. So grassland stewardship programs. Um, uh, you see the, the, the agencies here, largely the ones delivering, including Manitoba beef producers. Um, and the, the objective of these uh, stewardship programs uh, is to assist ranchers or farmers in, in managing their native grasslands um, uh, to ensure that they persist over time and to improve uh, grassland habitat health uh, with associated benefits to species at risk and and uh, other native grassland biodiversity. Now these are this is a, through the stewardship programs. These are typically achieved through um, uh, term agreements, uh, often like a ten year term, uh, where best management practices are provided and implemented um, in the farm operation. Um, to uh, provide benefits to to the ranch operation as well as to the, the prairie health. Um, and some examples of that would be it'd be some some fence installation uh, to permit uh, better grazing management, um, shrub mowing, um, water system construction again to all all geared towards uh, improving the the sustainability of the ranching operation with a focus on uh, on species at risk and grassland. Um, uh, health. Um, we've also seen some invasive species control is associated with this. If that's if that's flagged as as an issue, um, so this area is is largely um, 
in the southwest of Manitoba in the Priority Place landscape um, with financial support from Environment and Climate Change Canada, the Weston Foundation, and the Conservation Trust, which is administered by the Manitoba Habitat Heritage Corporation. Another topic under our grassland management and in a, in a conservation theme is, is range management plans. And um, as part of, uh, of the Manitoba Habitat Heritage Corporation's grassland stewardship program, um, landowners have the opportunity to partake in uh, range management planning um, where, where we, we prepare a, a, a range management plan that includes background information um, uh, an inventory uh, of of the of the, uh, the the farming or the ranching operation, uh, a range health assessment, an inventory of uh, of uh, of stocking rates and other other management activities, with a recommendation for for management uh, things like stocking and density and, and timing and so on, as well as uh, any recommendations for um, invasive species control. Um, and again, these these uh, for us, these management plans have been focused in the priority place of Southwest Manitoba and have been supported by um, Environment and Climate Change Canada. And we're in a three year program now um, with the intent of developing uh, range management plans for uh, five, five operations per year. So in the case where uh, um, lands have been purchased or donated or owned by the, the, the agency, such as MHHC, NC or, or others, um, there's typically property management plans um, with the intent of optimizing the grassland habitats for biodiversity or if there's some target species. Um, uh, and in cases where there are cultivated acres on, on these purchased or donated lands, they're often seeded down uh, to a perennial cover, um, which uh, you know, has included uh, native native mixes uh, as well as tame mixes um, with the intent of providing uh, some permanent cover um, and enhancement for, for wildlife and biodiversity. Usually a grazing management plan is involved um, or grazing practices uh, to, to, uh, to manage that, that, that habitat as well as uh, consideration for, for shrub uh, encroachment, so monitoring of shrub and management of shrub encroachment on, on these properties. While it's not the uh, um, native grassland specific practice, uh, uh, the Manitoba Forage and Grassland Association is uh, one of the, the leading voices on regenerative agriculture in Manitoba um, with a focus of enhancing perennial cover as part of a farm operation. And uh, it's important to understand that regenerative agriculture is not one specific practice. Um, it's a variety of different, different practices that are applied in land management, whether it's farming or ranching, um, with the intent of building up um, the health of the soil ultimately. Uh, so the five core principles uh, prescribed or adhered to in regenerative agriculture relate to minimizing soil disturbance and maximizing crop diversity, uh, keeping the soil covered, perennial cover uh, if possible, um, and maintaining a live root uh, throughout the year. And, the, and, and regenerative agriculture strives to integrate livestock into the uh, into the um, the farm operation all with the goal to to boost production uh, with the um, smaller carbon footprint and healthier lands and a greater natural benefit for wildlife and people move on to uh, to Community pastures, and I've got a the next slide. I think I've got a map of, of what we're talking about, but I'll just 
provide a little context first. Um, the Association of Manitoba Community Pastors um, is a not-for-profit organization that is committed to enhancing and supporting the livestock industry by providing high-quality grazing um, balanced with sustainable range rangeland stewardship. Whereas the uh, well-managed grazing lands deliver a number of benefits, um, uh, such as you know grassland habitat improvement um, and conditions for that benefit species at risk as well as uh, overall um, soil health and water quality. And the association, um, they manage a number of pastures, uh, including those listed here. Um, <clears throat> and if we slip, flip to the next slide, we can see the distribution of these uh, fairly large community pastures in, in Manitoba. So, so being a uh, uh, not-for-profit, um, the Association of Manitoba Community Pastures has secured, you know, a number of partnerships uh, to permit management of the pastures, um, and they highlight the benefits of well-managed gra pasture uh, grazing systems. Um, in the the first, uh, well, the first one is the the Conservation Trust. Um, which is a, a Manitoba Climate and Green Plan initiative, which is administered by uh, the Manitoba Habitat Heritage Corporation. And the AMCP, um, they delivered a number of projects um, with uh, funding through the trust. Um, Secondly, um, since 2014, uh, the association has received funding uh, from under a, a Canadian and Manitoba government ag, ag partnership uh, called Growing Forward 2, and uh, as well as uh, a Canadian agricultural partnership. Um, and uh, thanks to that support, uh, AMCP has transitioned the community pasture program and implemented a number of projects across the pasture system, including brush management um, and, and has completed environmental farm plans for all community pastures. And with support from the uh, Canadian Prairies Prescribed Fire Exchange, um, the association um, is planning to conduct prescribed burns on a number of uh, community pastures to manage brush encroachment and um, to uh, you know enhance uh, forage quality um, and improve habitat for wildlife. And over the last uh, the last number of years, the Nature Conservancy of Canada has been working with has worked working jointly with uh, with the association uh, to deliver projects that monitor and improve biodiversity. Uh, of prairie grasslands in in target areas, um, and specifically uh, the uh, Spy Hill, Ellis, and uh, Archie Ellis areas have been of high high priority in this in this initiative. Um, uh, and there's been a fair bit of work on on land planning and biological inventories and monitoring with the focus on on uh, species at risk in this area. And uh, th thanks to the planning and 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 monitoring work, um, these two community pastures, um, supported by Birds Canada, Nature Manitoba, and Nature Saskatchewan, have have been in, included in as uh, important bird areas in the important bird and biodiversity area uh, network in both Manitoba and uh, where the pastures are in the Saskatchewan side. And lastly, um, the critical wildlife habitat program is just initiated um, or just started on a on a Manitoba mixed grass prairie securement program. Now this is, you know, started out as a as a three year program funded um, partly by Environment uh, and Climate Change Canada with the the intent is to secure subsurface rights uh, within 
within uh, the Spy Hill Ellis primarily, but also potentially Ellis Archie community pastures uh, to uh, mitigate the development, the threat of development of, of the subsurface rights. And uh, I'll go into a bit more detail on this uh, when we get down to the mitigation section in a few more slides. Now, a number of a number of the wildlife management areas in Manitoba do have grassland components, um, and uh, um, the Wildlife Act designates uh, specific crown lands as wildlife management areas. Um, and these are the wildlife management areas are essentially in place for um, uh, the benefit of, of wildlife and for the enjoyment of people. And they play an important role in biodiversity conservation and, and provide for a number of wildlife related forms of recreation, including things like bird watching, um, other wildlife watching and hunting and trapping are, are generally also permitted on, on, uh, on WMAs with, with some areas of restriction. But uh, through some pilot projects, um, partnering with um, uh, Manitoba Wildlife Federation, um, Wildlife and Fisheries Branch, and uh, you know, participating and cooperating producers, um, grazing management plans and grazing has uh, has been initiated um, on some wild on some WMAs with uh, also some monitoring of habitat included. Research and monitoring there. There was quite a quite a wealth of, of this that came into the, the grass on forum I mentioned earlier. So, but I'll just touch on on just a couple a couple areas, um, and specifically we'll, I'll talk about the, um, the the critical wildlife habitat program survey of 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 native grasslands um, in both western Manitoba and the tall grass prairie area. Um, like the the CW the CWHP's goal was to, is is to identify and conserve and manage native grasslands and the rare and endangered species that these habitats support um, with those two focus areas, like I said, of mixed grass in the southwest and uh, tall grass in the southeast. And cr the Critical Wildlife Habitat Program conducts surveys of grasslands and, and providing a, a, you know, a grade of, of the, the grassland quality. And since 1989, uh, the program has surveyed uh, Primarily on, on private lands over 500,000 acres in, in that uh, 30 year period. Other basic surveys that are conducted uh, by certainly MHHC um, on conservation agreement lands is a baseline survey um, where, when signing agreements, um, the survey outlines um, habitat types, uh, species present, uh, species at risk as well as other features of the property. And once once signed into a CA, uh, MHHC uh, conducts annual surveys of all, all CA lands to, to ensure compliance with conditions um, that are listed on, on the title on the CA. So order mitigation, um, the Bertle Transmission Project, uh, uh, you know, runs from the Bertle the Bertle Station, um, largely through uh, cultivated acres, um, and then bisects the the Spy Hill Ellis Community Pasture before terminating um, at the Ten Talons Station in Saskatchewan. Um, <clears throat> and as required by the Environment Act license issued to Manitoba Hydro for um, for construction and operation of the Bertle Transmission Project, um, Manitoba Hydro is providing compensation for impacts of the new transmission line effects to native grasslands and grassland birds in the Spy Hill Ellis community pasture. And so the, the funds uh, are being held by, by uh, the Manitoba Habitat Heritage Corporation and the intent of those funds or the, the the intent is to secure uh, subsurface rights um, to parcels of, of land within uh, the community pasture or the adjacent uh, Archielis community pasture. Um, and through a partnership with, with uh, MHHC, um, 
critical wildlife habitat program and the wildlife fisheries branch, uh, the, the Manitoba Hydro funds are, are being used to pursue these subsurface rights um, and, and funds from uh, Environment and Climate Change Canada are being pursued to to maximize the area secured. Um, so we're, we're using some matching funds. And this this project is just getting going, um, and we'll see how the uh, the securement of the subsurface rights proceeds. Um, if it if it doesn't, if it proves to be difficult, um, Plan B is to add on some securement of surface rights through likely through conservation agreements um, of, of grasslands in, in the general area. They're adjacent uh, to the community pastures if, uh, if required. All right, well, I think I'll end it there. And um, if you have any questions, that I, I'll, uh, I'll do my best. Well, thank you, Kurt, for that presentation. And uh, you can either leave it here or if you want to stop your screen sharing and turn your video on, that would be great. Oh, there you are. Good. So I want to open it up. Um, one, as I said, thank you so much for that good presentation and overview. And we have a good number of people on the call today, so I wonder if uh, there's any questions out there. So either put up your hand or just speak. Mark Francis, yes, we could. Hi, Kurt. Uh, welcome and congratulations on your new appointment at MHHC. I, I hope we can meet up very soon. Um, and as you know, I, I talked to Stephen yesterday. And uh, yeah, so hopefully we can talk soon. Um, I just had a question about the subsurface rights. That's a uh, really interesting, innovative, something new. W are you looking at um, securing all subsurface rights or are there certain um, rights that you would be, be targeting in that or is that planned yet? Yes, yeah, my understanding. So this is being led by um, the uh, wildlife and fisheries branch. They're, they're the lead on it. We're, we're the banker. So to speak, and the critical wildlife habitat program is involved with us. I, you know, I guess maybe the critical program is is leading it jointly with with uh, with with the wildlife branch. Um, it, my understanding is that it's all subsurface rights, and the um, the approach is to get evaluation of of the rights, and uh, and then approach the owner uh, with uh, an offer to purchase. So it's I think this is something that's not. Um, not done certainly from the conservation end, but uh, see how it proceeds. Right on, thank you. Charlotte, so you have a question. Hey, can you hear me? Sure can. Yeah. Okay, good. Hey, Kurt, welcome aboard. Um, thank you. thank you for the presentation, very good. Um, I just had a question about your range management plans for your extension services and then also for the community pastures. Um, it sounds like you're making recommendations for, I don't know if it's private landowners or for the community pastures themselves, um, possibly two different things under two different things. I'm just wondering, do you guys outsource that or do you have someone, do you have an agrologist on staff that handles setting those things up? So on the community pastures front, we're we're not involved with any of that planning per se. That was just sort of a um, sort of a presentation on on what AMCP is doing, and we're we're not involved with that. On our range management plans, um, I would have to get, look into that a bit deeper. But I, my right now, I believe we're uh, we're not outsourcing that. Uh, we're doing that internally um, with staff that have experience in that area. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? We don't want to let Kurt off too easy. He is new in this job, so uh, amazing. <laughs> Sink or swim. <laughs> oh, well, thanks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, um, 
if there are no others, uh, feel free to reach out to me or and I can connect you with Kurt or I can uh, make sure you have his contact information as well. Um, this is really, I think, does a nice job of wrapping up, um, as we've heard in this whole sort of series of grassland initiatives, some of the older initiatives through the, the PCAPs and forums, as well as the JB8 from Graham Patterson, um, and then hearing from each of the provinces too. So we appreciate uh, you, Kurt, taking this time and for the work MHHC is doing. And of course, I know there'll be many questions that might not have been answered, but uh, reach out to Kurt, uh, either through me or directly, and I'd be happy to respond. So thank you, everyone. Thank you so much for your time. Thanks for Ian for your technical support as always. And I will mention that next month we're moving into the plan is to some presentations on uh, boreal conservation. So a slight left or right turn, depending on how you view it. And uh, that gives a bit of a diversity of the landscapes in the Prairie Habitat Joint Venture. All right. Thanks, everyone, and have a great Wednesday. Thank you, guys.